On behalf of the Orange County Community Scholar Program, otherwise known as CSP, I want to welcome you all to Zoomer Canyon. It's a Friday series of music in July, August, and September, co-sponsored by the Mirage Jewish Community Center and the Jewish Federation of Orange County. Before you get your picnics ready and get ready, get ready for the concert and Shabbat, I want to thank the uh, Albert and Rhoda Weissman Arts Endowment Fund, a joint program of Jewish Community Foundation Orange County and Jewish Federation for helping to underwrite and make this series happen. Thank you, everybody, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom from Jewish Federation. We are happy to co-sponsor this live from Zoomer Canyon Friday music series and wish you all a healthy, relaxing, and meaningful Shabbat. Rock on. Hey y'all, this is Joe Buchanan. Eris Safar and I are so excited about today's program. But before we start, we'd like to introduce to you an incredible musician direct from Orange County. He's amazingly talented and we know you're going to love what he has to share with you today. Folks, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Jason Fetty. To believe we have all been there Sometimes it feels like we are all alone In the wilderness of I don't know I took the turns that got me afraid and lost I pushed the world away and I paid the cost I wound up shivering and on my own a seed that we all can sow in the wilderness of I don't know. Sudden silence held my head. Try to call up something from some book I read. Try to call you but I could not reach the phone in the wilderness of I don't know. I made a plan, but I did not get too far It is not everyone can read the stars I beg for mercy when the night unrolls In the wilderness of I don't know It is dark and it is lonely in the cold There is thunder coming up from worlds below in the stillness there's a flicker of a glow It is a seed that we all can sow In the wilderness of I don't know Then I remembered that I did not know Told the sky that it was so and then the sun came up and pointed my way home From the wilderness of I don't know I went out walking, but I never left my room I started talking, but my words were just balloons Well, they never landed, so nobody knew That I was lost and far away from Dark and it is lonely in the cold. There is thunder coming up from worlds below. And in the stillness, there is a glimmer of a glow. It is a seed that we all can sow. In the wilderness of I don't know. In the wilderness of I don't know. Hey 
everybody. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Joe Buchanan. And I'm Harris Safar, also known as D1. D1. And we're so excited to have you here. We want to uh, extend a special thanks to Ari Katz and CSP for, uh, for being amazing. I am so excited to introduce you to this man. I'm a big fan. His name is D1. He's a music producer. He's a music creator, making videos, making music, making hip hop and world production, doing all kinds of amazing stuff. He is the founder of the Sephardic Music Festival, Shim Speed, and Slay Sonics. And, uh, and we had the opportunity we, that we got together in L.A. I felt like a fish out of water. He made the place feel like a home. Uh, it's just one of the nicest guys I know and such a huge, massive heart and does so much good. I could not be more excited to introduce you to D1. Wow. That means a lot. So. Oh, <laughs> well, all true, brother. All true. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm excited. Josh Nelson, thank you for uh, including us in this. This is awesome. Um, you know, I worked in different capacities and mostly like making sure people are working. Um, Joe Buchanan's last album, which is amazing. Um, kind of how we work together, but we hadn't had a chance to collaborate on music. And like he had said earlier, our music styles are so different. You know? I love like folk and jazz are my favorite music and spiritual music as well. Um, so I don't know, but like when I'm producing, it's usually from like a hip hop lens or perspective and kind of bringing in beats and definitely heavy on the beats even with the melodies it's always like you know that's my biggest part like one of the engineers that i work with he would always make fun of me that was like if there's 70 tracks like 60 of them are devoted to drums <laughs> but uh anyway so the the collaborations we did they're it's bringing together like americana and folk singer songwriter with joe buchanan um singing and playing guitar and then I'm on the end of like doing the percussive elements, drums and the synths, um, sometimes bass and other sort of like textural elements to it. But it's been, it's, it's yeah, I mean, you're going to hear, but it's definitely <laughs> interesting to hear them come together. And I think it, it's been created something like super unique, especially in the Jewish world. I don't think there's been anything really in that style. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you get A&R credits. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to hear the show, man. Let's do it. Um, I chose to do the Sabra Sessions. Um, just kind of, I have like a list of, I don't know, a few hundred tracks that I've compiled um, that are kind of like world music, some found Jewish stuff, um, a lot of Israeli songs and remixes. And when I did this initially, it was before Diplo, the producer and DJ was even famous. He was producing, he was calling her Maya when I met her, but it was MIA who became also huge. Um, it was called Piracy Funds Terrorism. And then he also had done a trip to Brazil and um, got really into Bali funk and favela music and put out something, Favela on Blast, that had like a big influence on me. So I've been into world music, I mean, prior to that, but kind of like through the lens of a DJ and just really loved how he incorporated all these different you know, disparate sounds. And so that's kind of what I did with the Sabra sessions. I wanted to do that while bringing in a lot of like Jewish and Israeli sort of music. Um, and yeah, I mean, people react to that really well. So it was cool to see. And what I'm doing now is like a volume two of it, I guess, in a sense. Um, it's all just done on the spot. So you can get a sense of me kind of like listening and seeing how it should play out. Um, and just kind of like cutting vocals up and then layering beats. Um, and all that sort of stuff. So, hope you enjoy. Dewan, that Yemenite kid. <laughs>
משלמים בקושי, יאללה תשחרר לי אבו כמון, אני לא רוצ'י, שטופסים שקלים במקום מילים, לא חול, לא דיבורים, חלאס עם הסטארס וג'ארס, חליק לעניינים, גם המוזה מעניין אותי, כל הפרוצדורה, חלטורה, אני לא שר רק לערד, פה זה לא פלורה פלפורה, וכל מיני מילים גבוהות כמו כיסוי הוצאות, מניות, ירידות, עליות, שערים, מבין רק מזומנים, מסביר את הבא For this next part, I, I'm kind of going in the space of um, the Sabra sessions, as I call it. I used to throw a party in New York called Kavlaz, and it was bringing in Israeli and world music and DJing and throwing these crazy parties. Um, around that time, I had met Diplo before he was famous, so this was years ago. He was putting together a mixtape for, I think a girl he was dating at the time, Maya, who became MIA, who was also massive in her own right, and played the Super Bowl. Um, that was called Piracy Funds Terrorism. He also went to Brazil and made a mixtape called Favela on Glass. And that was a big influence on me, just kind of like bringing in these different sounds, world music, Miami booty bass and electronic stuff. So, you know, I wanted to incorporate that and kind of shed light on some of like Israeli and Jewish music. Some of it's old and you would never picture in a DJ set. Some of it's being remixed um, live on the spot, as you could hear. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of the, the whole idea with the Sabra sessions. I've compiled all these different things, so what I'm doing now is kind of like a volume two, like kind of jumping back into that and doing it. I'll be doing it all on the spot, as you'll hear, so I'll be queuing up and listening and cutting out vocals and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, Sabra Sessions, volume two, exclusive for you. Enjoy. Used to do some hookers, play some poker. Me and my best friend, you know what they call them? They call them like this. Major Laser! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Altars, holy coty booty, me they are from way back when I need a rookie. Cut every me for not below in Tushin, Tavila for shower, my man as of what he may sushi. Tick shore at me, shaker at me, heart at it. Chulu ala dis on key, and I gel alta let it. Shake it by old pan, some tapele for not let it. But I'm a shaker at a tilly me ball for me that melted. אני שולט בעיר, הכי בולט בעיר, לא מסתלבט תגביר אני נוצץ, אתה מוצץ, זאת האמת, תחזיר כבוד אל המשחק, תרים קצת המכנס הסל שלך בדיחה, אחי, מזכיר לי את הקרקס אני עף, אני טס, אתה נס, אתה ננס אתה שווה לדמה, אני שווה לאס אתה נלעס, אתה נדרס, אני עושה את זה בקלאס לי אומרים תביא עוד, לך אומרים נמאס אז אני פשוט אפסיק פוקי לא פלא שהשם חיבה מלאך המוות Welcome back. We are, uh, we are getting ready to do the second collaboration piece. And before we do that, though, D1, I want to ask you a couple of things about yourself as an artist and about some of the things that are important to you. Sure. Uh, I guess really the first is the music that you make. Why do you feel it's important to make Jewish music? Why are you driven to make Jewish music? So I think, I mean, my family on my mother's side, is Yemenite and we grew up listening to like a lot of Yemenite music from Chaim Moshe, um, of Khaza and just a bunch of different Sion Golan, and then eventually Eyal Golan. So it was like a lot of different influences, very Arabic, Mizrahi. Um, and then the Yemenite music and book, which is kind of like high, like, you know, it's got a light to it. That it's, kind of, it's like this interesting looking, like you can tell. It is the Yemenite book, and it's the right. song and dances and Pew Team and all that. And it's actually called the D1, which is where I got my name from. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's amazing. I, I got that name because I was actually asked to uh, – I was commissioned to do – take a week-long program at the Jewish Museum in Manhattan. And I was, like, going through their archives of, like, rare um, – just different recordings and some field recordings that there's only, like, a few – Copies even pressed up on vinyl of, I'm on mm-hmm. 38, some on 33 um, records. And that was kind of how it started. I think within that, I like came up with the name. And then actually with the guard with like the Jalabia and the Kafias and all that stuff, um, which is what Yemenites and Moroccans wear when they get married as part of the thing. Right. 
so yeah i mean i had always been kind of growing up i was it was already like a part of me and i was always inspired and i think eastern european music like the jewish music from eastern europe has always been like the big part of the jewish music canon like especially the modern jewish right. music and um i just felt like that so much of that influences from assimilation and a lot of like just eastern european non-jewish music like why love we've toured the world and he always joked that it's like jewish music is just like the greatest hits of like 1890 in germany or something you know like <laughs> so i always wanted to you know, come to the spartak festival and shem speed and most of the work is basically informed by trying to raise awareness and educate people to jews being indigenous to the middle east and our history there and the culture and the music and you know if you think back to like moshe um and just all the music that was being played back then um to reach these high levels it's it obviously more similar to you know yamanite or arabic or whatever you would classify the music of that region yeah. um and as you know with the psalms and how david composed those and reached his level of prophecy was through song um so yeah i mean that's it's that's that's the thing for me it was just <laughs> inspired and yeah. Right on, man. Well, I guess that, that kind of actually leads perfectly to my next question, which is how does your kind of Jewish connection, spirituality, all that sort of emerge in the music that you make? How does that how does that come out in there? Yeah, so I guess since both I, I guess I'll jump back and forth with the two questions since they're both kind of related and I kind yeah. of a little bit on both parts. So um yeah, so for my myself, like I said, you know, I've been inspired by that and I think there's always like that extra bit, like, you know, if you're a musician, you love music, but you're also passionate about um, spirituality and your religion or whatever it would be. Right. So sometimes it plays out into that. Um, so for people like me and you, it does. Um, I always viewed it from like, when I was doing music with Why Love, I kind of viewed it like a tribe called Quest, like, so they're Muslim and they're not making mu like Islamic music. They're just making, right. but because it's a part of them, it plays out and there's lines and there's things that they say. And, you know, people, it's like the hum of vin yavin. Like if you, the person who will understand or who has that knowledge, they pick that up. You know what I mean? So right. that's kind of like always how I did music where it was like, I didn't set out to be like, I'm going to cover this Jewish song or I'm going to try to do this specifically Jewish thing. It was just because it was a part of me, it played out. You know what I mean? And yeah. in Sefer Yitzhara, the, not Sefer Yitzhak, Sefer Achimuch, the book of teaching, there's a line called like, Adam Nifal Lefi Pilato, which is like, a person is what they kind of like spend their time doing, you know? Um, so that's like what makes up like what you're passionate about, what you're thinking about, what you're, you know what I mean? Like, so if that's, especially when I was in the heart of that, that was just always on my mind. I was busy doing that. So it played out, especially musically, like you're going through a breakup or, whatever you're going through that usually is <laughs> formed informs what you're creating and what you're writing about. Yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of how it plays out when, in a natural way. But yeah, I think also with us, it's because it's such a big part of us and because we're inspired by it, there's like that extra bit. Like, so I can listen to whatever right. song, like John Coltrane for me, he's like, <clears throat> you know, like he just, I could hear one note, of a saxophone and I will know if it's, you know, and he right. eight hours to 10 hours a day playing music. But I all said like, there could be a naked woman standing right next to him and he would <laughs> know or care. That's how devoted to music he was. And it was, a, <laughs> you know? so for me, and the Jewish term is like the like the opposite, like to take it to the other side or the side of holiness. Um, although I view that as holy and spiritual as well. So for me, like, there's that extra connection. Like, I did a Shiri Shirim album inspired by when I heard Erez Yechiel do his um, Tikkun Klali album. And now with Zusha, who Shlomo is like my younger brother. I grew up with him, and his whole family is incredible. Um, his older brother, Dan, was like one of my best friends. But anyways, I listen to Zusha now even. Like, I'll have my AirPods and listen to certain Zusha songs when I'm, like, saying Tehillim or when I'm davening Mincha or whatever. It, like, takes me to that space, you know? That's awesome, man. Power. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I I appreciate that, man. Thanks for all the honesty and and heart in there. I think it's one thing to 
you know, you get to hear somebody's music and then you get to hear the story from them behind all of that. So uh, that's incredible. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, Thanks you. for sharing that. And, I, and I'm excited to hear this next part. This is the collaboration piece on some of your stuff. <laughs> like, let's, let's hear how this goes. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Well, hope, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening. For sure. Thanks.
Yeah, so I wanted to introduce you all to my friend Joe Buchanan here, who I was actually introduced to by my friend Lakey Pelter, who I produced one of his albums. Extraordinary love, you can check that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Joe actually happened to be in town from Texas. Um, where I live in LA, he came over, and I was already like, all right, sign me up for whatever. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just an incredible soul, and you can see Aww. that you can probably see right now. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, as I heard his music, I kind of described him as like a singer, songwriter, country singer, um, with a bit of soul, like almost like if Dwayne Allman had like a Jewish soul and was inspired to tell stories through song, um, of Judaism, history, culture, all the teachings and kind of finding that in the traditional melodies and stories that would be Joe Buchanan. So you're in for it. Man. That is high praise. I appreciate that. <laughs> All the brothers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, CSP, let's get to it. I uh, I don't write a lot of prayer melodies, uh, but I do when I really need one. And I really needed this one after Hurricane Harvey blew through Houston. So this take on Hashki Venu is really soaked in a lot of struggle and a lot of demand and a lot of need. And I think it's okay to struggle with prayer, and I definitely did uh, with this one, so... I hope you enjoy it, and it goes like this. We'll spread out the shelter over us. shelter in the shadow of your wings how she they knew out all night hello hey little shama but how many they knew show rain let us down low lay us down shelter in the shadow of your wings Hashki Venu out all night Elohim Lil Shalom Ha'ali Deinu Shorein Bulechai Hashki Venu Pray for life, Lord, and we pray for peace. But now and when the drums are at ease, yeah, well, blessed is the one who gave us breath. And you saved us so we can live what we've got left. Hashki Vinu, not all night. Shelter in the shadow of your wings. Well, there's shelter in the shadow of your wings. Yeah, there's shelter in the shadow.
<laughs> oh my goodness. I uh, <laughs> when I when I first converted to Judaism, uh, I started writing music to kind of help myself understand the things I was going through. My rabbi mentioned to me uh, that I should write a song about Rosh Hashanah, right? For the young and for the kids. And so this started off as a children's song, very quickly turned into a song that I didn't even realize that I needed. Um, and it's become a part of services kind of all over the country. And that's a, a, a huge honor as a songwriter, especially as a Jewish songwriter, when folks have a connection and your music helps drive connection. It just means so much when you see that happen. And so uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this song. And uh, it's called Return. And I hope you enjoy it. It goes like this. I will take a long look at me and think about what it is that I see. Have I been good? What do you let do on I said I'd do, remembering the words that I've used. Say it the deeds, not just lips. It's gonna be a brave new year starting right now, right here. Well, I will be strong and stand up tall, reach out for others when they fall. I will rejoice in my faith and remember that love is. Every day we live our lives Some days we let ourselves slide And we forget our way But thankfully it's not too late Avinu Malkinu Omenu Amenu I may have done wrong at times I know Shoot. 
All righty. One more tune for you. I, uh, you know, there's a lot of times in your life when everybody's going to have advice for you, right? There's a, a lot of wonderful folks, a lot of great advice out there. And if I have ever been great at anything in my life, it has been at completely ignoring advice and, and both to my benefit and sometimes to my detriment. You got to know, you got to know when you should do that. I haven't always been good at it, but uh, right after I joined the tribe, there was a lot of folks that were telling me, you know, they had a million different ideas on how, not just how to be Jewish, but how I was supposed to write Jewish music, what Jewish music was supposed to be like, all these things. And, you know, I just did, you know, wrote the kind of music that I was influenced by and, and I kind of approached every day just trying to figure out how to, how to do my best. So you got to know when to take advice and you got to know when to kind of blaze your own trail. So this is really a song about that. So <laughs> if, uh, this is a song for you and, uh, and for all those folks too uh, that, that, uh, that seem to know how you should live your life better than you. So this song is called Say What You Will. I hope you enjoy it. And I will tell you there's a part in here that uh, says build your fence but don't build it so high. Because I'm from Texas, everybody assumes I'm talking about the border fence when I uh, when I play that part, and they're always like, "Ah, sneaky political commentary," and I'm like, "That is that is in no way what that was." I'm talking about the fence around the Torah, so just heads up. All right, <laughs> it goes like this. <laughs> I overexplain things sometimes. All right, here we go. Well, say what you will. Well, say what you will about me. At least I'm trying to be free I'm Trying to do all that God asked of me Say what you will Oh, now say what you will about me At least I'm trying to be free I'm Trying to do all that God asked of me We can be jaded at times Feel faded at times Tucked away, but too far to see. Surrender to our inner lies and not feel the truth of who we're meant to be. Cause we're all a beacon of light to the seekers inside. Trying to do all that God asked of me It's like that you Say what you will Oh, now say what you will about me And at least I'm trying to be free Trying to do all that God asked of me So hold on to the tree Yeah, and all that you do And be proud of yourself I'll always be you Cause there's strength Story, the strength in our song will be all right in each other's arms. So build your fence, but don't build it so high that you can't see outside. Every soul is a beacon, each spirit a breath. And we give to each other, but we forget what we left. So pray like a child and be the gift that you are. Not each other's judge, but each other's heart. Say what you will. Oh, now say what you will about me. And at least I'm trying to be free. I'm trying to do all. God asked of me Say what you will Oh now say what you will about me And at least I'm trying to be free Trying to do all that God asked of me Say what you will Oh now say what you will about me At least I'm trying Trying to do all that God asked of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right.
right, so before we jump into the next part of your performance, just wanted to ask you a couple questions, if that's cool. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so one being, what do you feel like music's role is in the Jewish community, or it should be, rather? Yeah, I think, I think music's role in the Jewish community has always been important. I think it's always been vital to who we are as a people and how we practice and how we relate to the things we're saying. Um, you know, one of the biggest concepts that we've got, the idea of connecting the head and the heart, right? Combining our knowledge with how we own that knowledge and how we participate with it and how we emotionally connect to it. So if you can bring those two things together, uh, you can do so much more good and you can get so much deeper into your Judaism. I think music does that. It's that bridge between those two things. It adds context and weight and and brings home kind of the feel of what we're doing uh, and helps give it legs. I think, it's, I think it plays a huge part in how we create our practice and in uh, kind of bridging that gap and bringing folks a lot closer. Right. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, so for the second question. Yeah. Um, how do your popular spiritual music influences pull us into creating your music style? <laughs> well... I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't have any context for Jewish music when I started doing this. I had no clue that Jewish music was even a thing. I mean, I knew it was probably there, but I didn't know any of it. In fact, um, right after I converted, somebody asked me, they said, uh, have you ever heard of Debbie Friedman? And I made the terrible mistake of going, who? And they were like, oh, hold on a minute, you know. So I, I wasn't listening to Jewish music. So when I started writing music, I drew on my influences, which were, you know, old school country and classic rock and trying to find a way to bring those to help me express what I was going through, through song and through music. And, uh, and I'm kind of glad I didn't have any context for what Jewish music was or what people thought it was supposed to be, because it helped me define my style. Um, and now, of course, I've got a, a, a big appreciation for all the different forms of Jewish music. But that's, that's really how it came in, because that's all I knew. And um, so, yeah, it was good. It was a good way to be as authentic as possible from the get-go. It was really important. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like the <laughs> sort of lens and you know experience and history with just music in general, so that kind of plays out into your music for sure. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. And I'm excited about what's next. So you you and I have completely different styles, and I th I think so much good can come out of that, and it could be so exciting. And I am super fired up about this next part, which is a a little bit of a collaboration on some stuff. So. Y'all check this out. All right. 
Yeah, well, I remember that I was there Who on that mountain yeah, long ago And I have been told Yeah, that you were with me Brothers and sisters And upon we all Yeah, well, I remember Whoa, oh, that there was thunder Hey, on that mountain Yeah, from the Lord We carry us With all the memories Love those words Yeah, that came before He named my toe my life
Thanks so much, everybody, for being here. It's been an honor and a delight to spend some holy and sacred time with you and play some tunes for you. I hope you've had a good time. Yeah, thanks, guys. This was a great opportunity. I had no idea what it was going to be like going in. And <laughs> happy. I think we both had a lot of fun. We're like texting, late night, email, <laughs> retransferring drop boxes. But anyway, I think we got it done for you all, and hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Ashari, Malachi Elyon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachi, Hakadosh Balhu. Bochem the Shalom, Malachi Ashalom, Malachi Elyon. Shalom Shalom, <laughs> Shalom.